yeah, what we what we will be having tonight is the topic of embrace who you are, and we have been so lucky as to get Kim Woodward, the wife of Ben Woodward, um, on for this. So we're really looking forward to that, uh, Kim. Uh, and we know that you have a very busy schedule, and you have also recently moved. So, but tell us a little bit, you know, about your your background. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I kind of have learnt a lot in uh, the environment that I've grown up in, but also uh, some of the most valuable lessons that I've learnt has been in different uh, roles that I've had, and one of them was, well, I think my the biggest one has been a mother, but also I have been uh, the president uh, on a local level of a global women's organisation that is the largest and oldest women's organisation in the world. Um, and, but also, as well as that, I've also been the president of a young women's organization for 12 to 18 year old girls to help guide and direct them in the paths that they choose. Um, so I've had quite a bit of experience working with both young girls and with older women who come from all walks of life, have all different kinds of challenges, all different kinds of successes, um, and really worked on how we can work together as women. Which is wonderful, and I mean, like Charlotte and I, we, we organized these events. We didn't do the introduction uh, on that, so I'll, I'll go a little bit back. Uh, Charlotte is, is uh, in Sweden at the moment, moment, up in the mountains, So, and we have some bad connections there as well. Uh, but she, she's in the background and uh, supporting there. So, so yeah, and she's up there with, uh, with her family and also her little baby girl. And uh, Kim, you have a big family to take care of. Yes, I do. I have six children, uh, mm -hmm. one extra one if you count Ben. Um, <laughs> so yes, so I have seven. But um, yes, it's very busy. It's very demanding. Um, but I use the, the, the gifts and talents that we have as women of multitasking. Just before I jumped onto this call, uh, I had my 20-month-old who's just pulled everything off the shelf I uh, dribbled all over my shoulder and uh, pulled my hair out. But uh, that's what we do. We get on with it as women and we, we make it work. Exactly. And you, you still look nice and cool and everything. We saw you a, a bit earlier on and uh, although you, you don't get the, the photo or the picture on just right now, but we see the, the beautiful photo of you on, on the presentation. So still keeping nice and calm regardless. <laughs> Yes, um, you have, uh, as you said, you have you have an interesting background with having worked with large women's organisations, and you have sort of worked with other types of organisations as well, with the younger uh, people and uh, all different ages. Um, and this of, you know, you, when we talked to you before the webinar, you said this of drawing up on your differences and your, your experiences and things. What, what do you have to tell, tell us more about that? Well, if I could just begin by just giving you a little bit of a background of my mm. upbringing. Um, yeah, sure. That, that just to give context to what I'm going to share, I guess which is, as all of us, our upbringing really defines who we become as adults. Um, and it's important to derive the lessons that we gain uh, and use them in a positive way we can as we grow up. But um, I grew up in, uh, I would say, not a very privileged area. It was a, it was a rough area of Liverpool in England. Uh, we frequently had stolen cars driving up and down the streets. Sometimes they would be crashing into the neighbors' homes. Um, but I guess it's something that we just learned to live with. Uh, it, it was just crazy at times. But as you can imagine, it's such an environment was not a place for a child to grow up. Um, and I learned very early on that if I wanted uh, my circumstances to change from that environment, then it would be my responsibility to change them. Uh, not necessarily my parents uh, or my brothers or families, but mine. Um, but there's a, there's a thing in Liverpool where they don't want you to change. They want everyone to just stay where they are. They don't want to see improvement. They just want to keep everyone uh, at the same, the same place. So I had to really fight for that. 
fight mm. to get out of that environment and uh, and change my circumstances. Yeah, I, I I actually lived in in England for three years, but in Manchester, and uh, I guess that's it is kind of a little bit the same working working cities as in industrial types of cities and background, and you could see you know the rough areas there. I I know what they can be like and uh, it, it takes courage to, to get out of it uh, and, and you probably, I don't know the English word for it, but in Norwegian we have something we call Jomteloven, which means this, that you know people want to pull you back and you shouldn't really think you are anything or any better than other people etc. Uh, and it, it requires an effort to get out of it like you've done. Yeah, I mean I'm not sure if you heard of Hiram Smith's uh, crab theory. But um, I'll just remind you, I'm sure most of you have heard of it, but uh, Hiram Smith is a well-known author, obviously, and motivational speaker. He said that when he was younger, he went to the beach with a group of friends, and um, they had a bucket. They wanted to collect some crabs, so they put water in the bucket and proceeded to collect crabs. Now, Hiram Smith noticed that some of the crabs were trying to climb out of the bucket. So he said to his friends, quick, we need to get a lid to put on this bucket because they're going to climb out. And his friends had said to him, no, we don't need a lid. They won't get out. Mm -hmm. He says, but they're starting to climb. He said, they won't get out. Just watch and see. And what he noticed was every time a crab tried to, tried to climb to the top of the bucket, another crab from below would grab its leg and pull it back down. And no crabs would get out of the bucket. Uh, and he called that his his crab theory. And I think sometimes in our lives, um, I certainly noticed it growing up, is that we are desperately trying to get out of this bucket that we find oh. ourselves in. But those around us don't necessarily want us to get out of that bucket, so they will pull us back down. And you know, Very sometimes, true. yeah, sometimes that that will be loved ones because they feel like. Uh, they know what's better for us or they feel like we might get hurt or we might lose hope so they try and pull us back down but we need to we really need to believe in ourselves and our abilities very true absolutely and uh, you know you mentioned also this of it's okay to have the qualities we have and do something that works for us and I mean you you got out of your environment and then kept going from there um, you you mentioned also three categories of uh, of women yes. what did you mean by that when we talked well I think from what I've learned from uh, from working with women and also not just from working with women but from learning myself from my own uh, experiences is that there are three different things that uh, as women we tend to do um, which aren't always good and the first is that we often compare ourselves not just to women but to men also um, and when we do that we put ourselves in a very dangerous situation you know each of us individually men and women we all have these individual character traits uh, individual talents and we really need to utilize and uh, draw upon those talents in being ourselves uh, not someone else but in being our very best selves um, and there's one that I frequently say to my daughter and I used to frequently say to the young women don't be someone else's best self be your best self because when we when we draw on those skills and qualities that we have uh, as women and as individuals that was when we. That is when we will make the greatest difference. I mean, I'm sure we all know someone who, uh, probably growing up in school, who so desperately tried to be something that they weren't, in attempting to be popular, in attempting to uh, have what someone else has, and often uh, that just doesn't work. It really doesn't work. Um, we need to draw upon our own experiences, we need to draw upon our own qualities and our skills, uh, which often we can see as a hindrance, but if we use them in the right way, they can become a real uh, blessing to us. Um, Helen Keller is a wonderful example of this. Uh, she's one of my heroes, really. You know, uh, obviously deaf, blind. Uh, she could have very easily have um, stayed at home and not done much with her life. But she utilized the qualities that she had, incredible courage, uh, determination. I can't imagine the amount of patience she must have had to do the things that she did. Uh, she published 12 books. 
she was a political activist, uh, she was a lecturer, she was the first deaf and blind person to ever obtain a bachelor's degree, um, she was outspoken in her convictions and she spent much of her later life raising funds for the blind and serving others and doing good for other people. Uh, and she used her talents and her abilities, regardless of her circumstances, um, to bring out the best possible outcome. Mm. So yeah, so I think as women, we compare ourselves too much. And we often see the very best in others and the very worst in ourselves. So we can look at someone and say, but look at all of these skills and qualities that they have. And we see all the very best. We don't see behind the scenes what they go through. Uh, Everyone is fighting battles that we don't know about. We often see the, the best front of that person. But then when we look at ourselves, we see the very worst in ourselves. So if I could give any possible advice, um, it would be uh, be your very best self, not someone else's self. Um, and you'll be well on your way to, to fortune and happiness. Very true, absolutely. And and But one question then, how how can one sort of learn, go about learning that we are actually good enough? I mean, you worked with a lot of different people, uh, women, different age groups, etc. And this of learning how to be good enough and build on our strengths, what, what uh, do you have some comment on that? Where do we start? I think we start by learning who we really are uh, and finding what our purpose is. Because once we understand who we are and where we want to go, that is when we're able to uh, pursue that direction. If we're trying to pursue someone else's path, then we will often find ourselves falling off that path. Uh, we need to know who we are, we need to know what we want, and we need to pursue it. Uh, and it will, it's, it's not something that will change overnight. It takes daily effort to look at ourselves, see our qualities and bring them out. I'm, I mean, I'm sure um, any of us who are mothers, and I'm sure there's lots of women on the call who aren't mothers, our children become a reflection of who we are. And I have learned so much as a mother um, in my, through my children because they will reflect who I am. Uh, and that's been able to teach me things that I couldn't even see in myself, uh, what they see. And so they've been able to bring awareness to me of some of the things that I need to change uh, because I wasn't even aware of it. But, so the first thing is becoming aware of uh, aware of the qualities that we have, seeing whether those qualities... Now, I'm not saying that all qualities that we possess will uh, allow us to be successful. Sometimes certain qualities will actually be uh, negative uh, rather than to the positive. So... We need to look at that and we need to see what works and we need to we need to go within ourselves and really be able to know in our hearts that what we're doing is right. I think, you know, going on to one of the other points uh, of, of the things that we need to do um, is to not be moved. Um, there's, a, there's a really good poem that I'd like to share and I'm sure you've heard this one before. You know, I like the simple things um, they work well for me. I don't like things to be too complicated. Um, but there's a poem, and I'm sure you've 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 heard it before. But it's called Good Timber. Um, and let me just share that with you. It says, "The tree that never had to fight for sun and sky and air and light, but stood out in the open plain and always got its share of rain, never became a forest king, but lived and died a scrubby thing." The man who never had to toil to gain and farm his patch of soil, who never had to win his share of sun and sky and light and air, never became a manly man but lived and died as he began. Good timber does not grow with ease. The stronger the wind, the stronger the trees. The further the sky, the greater the length. The more the storm, the more the strength. By sun and cold, by rain and snow, in trees and men, good timbers grow. Where thickest lies the forest growth, we find the patriarchs of both. And they hold counsel with the stars, whose broken branches show the scars. Of many winds and much of strife, this is the common law of life. And I love that because we need to stand firm in who we are and where we're heading, regardless of what others say. But also in that, when storms come, which they will, uh, we need to stand firm to our convictions, 
Um, we will often have, in our pursuit of excellence, we will often face gale force winds of opposition and um, peer pressure. And yet, in order to succeed, we, we cannot be moved from our path while these storms beat against us. Um, we need to continue to make good choices, right choices that we know to be right. Um, I don't believe there are any small decisions. Uh, every day-to-day -day decision that we make um, right now are of critical importance and, and can have far-reaching effects. Um, they can affect many generations. It's, it's often difficult to make the right choices because sometimes our circumstances we want to stay within the ease. We don't want to step out of our comfort zones. And um, an experience of this for me is obviously very recently, as I'm sure most of you are aware, um, we have recently moved from the UK uh, over here to California for uh, Ben to take up his position here uh, as president of NICEN. Um And that was a really difficult decision to make. Um, however, we knew instantly that it was the right decision to make and so once we had made that decision um, that it was right and it was correct it became a lot easier to do what we needed to do um, however it still didn't mean, mean that it was smooth sailing you know we've got six children we've brought them over here the, the journey in and of itself on the plane was I can't even describe what that was like. Uh, with six children, we had 19 pieces of carry-on baggage. We had eight coats. We had every hand full that we could possibly carry. Um, within five minutes of the flight taking off, our four-year-old kind of arms in the air screamed and said, Yay, we're almost at California. And we just had to laugh because we thought we've got a long journey ahead. But, you know, we've had to get them into three different schools, uh, into a very different culture. We've had to leave family and loved ones, um, which is the biggest wrench of all is leaving family and loved ones. Um, but, you know, when something is right to do, it's right to do, regardless of how difficult it becomes. Very true. And the thing is, like, uh, the important thing is finding the balance in, in all of this situation. I mean, I, I assume you would have had a lot of checklists, etc., in the, in the moving process and uh, getting everything over. But with regard to balance, you know, the focus on balance, that's important for you. Yes, absolutely. You know, balance in life is where we, we, we will find our real peace because for me, you know, sometimes if I if I uh, do too much, then I will often just become my worst possible self. Um, and we need to we need to know where where the line is and and have a balance in all things. You know, as women, we are required in today's society to be so much. You know, we are working women. We are homemakers, we are mothers, we are wives, we're daughters, we're businesswomen, we're role models, we're sisters. We have so many roles to play, often more more roles than what a man has to play. Um, and we need to know and understand what things on our lists are less important and let them go. Um, never let things that matter most be at the mercy of things that matter least. Uh, understand what is vital, understand what is vitally important and what isn't. Um, and sometimes that's difficult because uh, what we think of is um, something that we really want to do but isn't important. It's difficult to give up. Uh, in, the, in the world that we live in today, uh, times have changed so much for us as women. and. We have so much, so much more on our plate than what we've ever had before, uh, and we're trying to juggle all of these different balls. So we've got them all in the air, and it, it, at some point, it will become too much. So we need to know and have balance as to what we do um, and how we do it, and make sure the things that we're doing, the things that we're spending our most time on, are going to give us the, the most benefit, um, and they're going to bring to us uh, the most worth, um, and and knowing that. 
that as women, all these differences that we have. I, I there's a wonderful clip going around on Facebook um, that I saw uh, yesterday, and I just thought this this was just really sums up so much um, what I feel on on this subject of womanhood and and coming together as women. Is that uh, and on this clip on Facebook, there's a group of women in a park, and you've got they're all um, women with babies, and they're all different kinds of women and there's a group of women who are they you know they're out there in the park and they're all breastfeeding really comfortable breastfeeding and then you've got another set of women uh, they're all in suits and shirts clearly just come from a business meeting and they've got their babies in their prams or their buggies um, and then there's another group of women who are doing yoga in the park with their babies strapped to them in you know little uh, carry uh, slings uh, and then there's a, a group of, uh, of stay-at-home dads who are in the park, and they've got their babies, and they're bottle-feeding their babies. So there's all these different groups. So it ends up being about 10 different groups of women, all kind of battling with each, with each other, saying, um, you know, we're breastfeeding, and we had natural births, and um, we have started our child in this preschool at one year old, so that, you know, and all of these different things, which... Um, as women, we all have these different ideas of what we want our children to be. We have different ideas of how we want to bring them into the world and how we want to raise them, and that's fine. That's good. Um, but they're all having this battle against them as to which is best, which way is best. And uh, at one point, one of the buggies kind of goes down a hill and starts to roll very quickly towards a lake. Uh, and in the midst of all of this argument, everyone quickly notices the buggies going down, and they all run all run for the buggy together and they grab hold of the buggy and they're all standing there all together and looking at each other and with a huge sigh of relief that the baby's safe and um and that to me just summed it up it's okay to have different ideas it's okay for us to uh see the world in a different way and that's good and we should embrace these things uh but when times need to we come together these different but we need to come together as women uh, and strengthen one another and not uh, criticize other women for the way that they choose to do things. They're being their best selves. We need to be our best selves. Exactly. And uh, like you were saying earlier on that, something will always have to give way but you know you we all make our own choices and whether we are this type of person like you said one doing the yoga one doing the business or one doing whatever uh, but then when it comes to it we can cooperate and work together really well and uh, uh, but what also what I liked about the picture you painted with these women is that the fact of embracing who you are uh, you know, in each of these, they feel they belong to one group and are happy perhaps in that group. Um, and and you've also, when we talked to you before, um, that was one of the things you also said, this embrace who you are and be happier. Uh, will you share a little bit more uh, of your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think what, what I've seen, uh, just going on from the um, what I was saying about how society has changed, you know, there's this big... Uh, idea, I guess, some time ago of equality, 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 and and women have to be, women have to be, from what I've seen, just like what men are, um, in order to succeed and achieve what men succeed. And I just think that although I agree with the background of women, um, should be able to, should be completely equal within the work environment. I, I believe that. It's been taken too far, uh, and what's happened is I feel like women are trying to become more like men and have the qualities of men, um, and that actually ends up being to their detriment. Um, as women, we know we have these skills that men don't possess, and and we need to utilize those um, because many many successful business women, um, women within Niken or other uh, industries, uh, one thing that that I have seen is that they embrace the difference. They embrace it. They don't try and um, go against their womanhood. They don't try and go against their um, what is naturally just within them to be. They accept who they are. They know who they are. They have great self-esteem. And I think 
they, they have that great self-esteem because they're not trying to be something they're not. They, they've accepted who they are and they are just using those qualities that are naturally within them to uh, to bring out their very best selves and be their most successful. And, and when they do that, that's when they end up being the most successful rather than discouraged by what they're not achieving. Um, they see the things that happen uh, which others may see as negative, they actually take those and they apply them back into this cycle and churn them out into a positive uh, learning experience. Um, because we know life is hard and we know it won't always go the way we want. But as we take both positive and negative experiences uh, from our lives, that's when we will actually become our very best selves. And the thing is, like you said, uh, of su being successful, it's not that women don't want to be successful, because we do, uh, and we want to be just as successful as the men, but the thing is, perhaps not in the same way, like you've been talking a little bit about. We don't need to do it in the same way that men do it, because mm. we can be equally, if not more successful the men. We just don't have to do it in the way that men do it in order to achieve it. We can do it in the way women do it, uh, mm. which often will bring the better results. Um, but I, I just often see uh, women not only compare themselves to other women, but they compare themselves to men and think if they do something the way a man does something, then they will achieve what the man has achieved. And actually the most successful women do things the way women do them uh, and become and it takes a lot of courage to do that because society now tells us that we have to be aggressive, we have to be um, all of these qualities that we see in old style successful businessmen. But the reality is that there's a new uh, swathe of, uh, of messaging that goes on in the business world now and that's actually showing that this aggressive form of business uh, that we often see portrayed by men in movies or in other environments, uh, it's actually the least productive way of, of achieving things. Um, now, now it's more sincerity, it's uh, loving the people that we work with, it's um, showing our, our qualities, uh, like I said, being sincere and uh, takes away from hard work, that is always a must, hard work is always a must, but we, we, need, to, uh, we need to love people. And that's where we will, we will exactly. have success. Because, I mean, I don't know about you, I can see so quickly through someone who um, is doing something for the wrong reasons. And, and I really find that difficult <laughs> to be around because it doesn't bring the best best result or the best outcome. Um, and and I, I really believe in learning from uh, difficult lessons and, um, and making them become our strengths. And uh, there's, a, there's a fantastic poem by Robert Browning Hamilton, um, and he talks a little bit about this. He says, I walked a mile with pleasure, she chatted all the way, but left me none the wiser for all she had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow, and near a word said she, but oh, the things I learned from here when sorrow walked with me. Um, you know, and we can learn so much from our bad experiences as well, from our positive experiences. Um, and the thing is that in doing that, that's also part of shaping us, like you said, with your background and the experiences you've had, also the thing of uh, moving to another country, etc. So, you know, we pull all of those things in, in addition to networking. I mean, women are good and sort of natural networkers in connecting with other people. And uh, like you said, with the thing of being successful, you know, if you're supposed to get the most out of people, then you have to work with them. Yeah, and we need to work as a team, and we need to want what, we also need to want not only what's best for us, but we need to want what is best for them, um, because we can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. We need, as a team, as, as women, womanhood in general, we need to work with each other, and uh, as we strengthen one another, and as we work with one another to um, allow others to achieve their greatest potential, uh, that is when we will receive the most back. It will it will always come back to us. Um, and it, you know this is why I say you know we need to we need to love others and we need to want what's best for others. Um, 
because I really believe that when we give selflessly of our time and our energy to others, um, it comes back in abundance uh, to bless us. Um, sometimes it come back, it, it'll come back in a way that we didn't intend or it'll come back in a way that we didn't see that it would come back. We think it will come back in a particular way and sometimes that's not the way. But I'm sure we can all uh, think of an experience that we've had where we've done something for someone else uh, and we've done it out of genuine um, interest, not out of any kind of way to get something back. Um, but when we do it with that kind of heart, it always comes back. It always comes back to us. Um, we should always be uh, doing rather than just listening. We, we need to do. There's, there's something where one says, give us gain. And uh, like you said, you know, if you, if you give, you might not get it straight back from the same source, but you might get it from elsewhere. Uh, so, so that's, that's also a nice thing with it. You know, you put something in and, and you, you will somehow get something back and you learn and, and grow in so many ways yourself as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we need to let our light shine. You know, we have the light within us, you know, and the Nikken distributors in particular, they have this light, this light, they have these messages that they, that they want to get out there. And their message um, is one of care and concern. And, you know, recently I went on a, uh, a cruise with Nikken for some, uh, some people who um, achieved a certain position. And, um, and as I was talking to them, all of them, all of them were saying, you know what, the, the stories that came out were ones of, you know, we met this person and they were struggling with this and I knew what would help them. I knew this product would help them or this particular product. And they've got incredible stories of, of a genuine, sincere love for people that has brought them to the successful positions that they've come to. Um, and it came out of really genuinely wanting to help. And, and I think there are, you know, of those I met in Nikon, that's exactly what it is. There are so many people who really want to help uh, others and we have such a great opportunity to do that. But then again, you know, being women, then we also need to build on what's inside of us and, and sort of bring that forth in, in order to help the most amount uh, we can. Um, so, so, yeah. But you also, another factor is the thing of mental strength. In, uh, in in this because I mean you looking back at your background you you came from where you came from it requires a certain mental strength to get out from the situation one perhaps is in or to to pull yourself up to another to a new level and and keep growing sort of um, uh, what do you have to say about the importance of that well uh, any life experiences that we come through will we can use for good or for bad we can take the positives or we can take the negatives and let them fester inside us until it breaks us down but um, for me personally I never underestimate the value of hard work and growing up in that environment I knew that any any ex uh, chances that I had of pursuing something better would require a lot of hard work a lot of mental determination to see my goal and not let anything get in the way from it you know and, and it was difficult you know I went to university I worked hard at university and um, I lived alone and um, during that time I'd moved out of my family home and and life in general what we've overcome you know I, I think people often see uh, ben and myself and the kids is you know people have made comments of you seem to have it all you have this perfect uh, family situation going on it seems to be um, perfect but you know there's always struggles there's always struggles behind there and you know I've I've had lots more pregnancies than I've had children um, you know I've almost died a couple of times in um, childbirth um, at one point, Ben was convinced that he'd be a single father, um, raising his children because it, it didn't look good. And you know, and and sometimes those things, although horribly um, scary at times, we just need to get through them and and then take the lessons from them and and use the 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 strength that it can give 
um, if we allow it to, in, in just making us all the more stronger. Uh, and, and knowing that at some future point for me, I know at some future point, um, all the lessons that I will learn will allow me to um, share my wisdom with someone else who's struggling, who's not either just recently been through that or is, is going to go through it. And so I, I use what I have. I've learned to um, to share with other people that you know what, regardless of what happens, you will get through it. Uh, there there is always hope, and there is always a better day ahead. You know, we often have bad days, and they can really take their toll on us. But there is always hope of better days ahead. Um, we need to be strong. We need to know who we are, know where we want to go, and um, let our light shine. Come together as women. Embrace the differences that we have as women. Um, and not criticize one another for those differences, but use them for our strengths. And um, and if we do that, we'll be we'll be well on our way to be consistently happy, regardless of the outcome. Very true. And um, and the thing is, like you said, unless you've been walking in somebody else's shoes, you don't know what those shoes are like. Uh, so it is better to you know um, gain your own experiences and and then share the experiences because we can be then you know have the compassion with other people because we we can to a certain degree although every situation and every person's life is different then we can still manage you know to have an understanding of it through things we have experienced ourselves yeah absolutely so um, do you have some we always say that regardless of if it's Nick and women or if it's other uh, speakers we have on do you do you have some final advice I you gave a lot of advice here now but do you have something in particular that you will really guess, focus on yeah you know I guess I've said it many times here on the call today and it's because it's the most important message that I can that I can give to outline and the first is be your very best self, not someone else's best self. Embrace who you are, your very best version of you. Um, stand firm in what you know to be right, regardless of what other people are doing. If you know it's right, pursue on that course um, and stand firm, regardless of the storms that come on the path. Um, and then the, the, the third thing, uh, get out and inspire people. Uh, let your light shine. Work with others, do it for the right reasons, and it will always come back to you. Uh, and that's where you will really achieve an abundant and happy life and make a real difference in the world around you. Uh, that would be the most important message to, that what I could give. Thank you. And, uh, you know, the thing is that what everybody wants is to be happy. and. We have to embrace ourselves, then, as you say, and uh, and and sort of build on who we are, etc., and uh, not pretend to be somebody else. We are good enough, like we are. Um, although, and although there are women out there thinking they're never good enough or they copy, but do rather for all of you take out what you have inside because there's so much, like uh, Kim has been talking about here, and and uh, share with you know other women uh, and uh, we, we're great storytellers as well we have a lot of stories and those are also important to share um, as, as part of this and um, yeah Kim thank you so much as um, Charlotte and I know we you've been really really busy and it's been difficult getting you on so we are so happy that you you did take the time um, to to get on this call and uh, you've had some really wise words to to tell people uh, all of those listening in on it and we know that there are a lot of people listen listening in actually today but also later on uh, with the recordings and so on so this webinar is recorded and it will be put out um, via the, uh, the the Royal Alliance's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, McKinsey, if you take the next page uh, up on the, the slide, or is it Charlotte? Yeah. Um, well, um, going a bit back again then yes we we will be doing uh, the recording putting it out uh, and, and so on we will have the next webinar in March just after the uh, big convention in Orlando so we're really excited about 
that and uh, we will get back to you with the information about the topic and everything. Uh, we're also uh, having a European Women in Power retreat uh, which we've sort of made a little bit of an, a marketing uh, or prom promotion of on, on the previous webinars as well uh, with regard to events coming up and we can really recommend for you to come there. Barbara Cox, uh, uh, whom a lot of you would know, uh, she is behind the Complete Balance products in, in Europe, but she's also a CEO of a company called NutriChef. Um, she has some wise words to say. You will find information about that, uh, what she has to say if you go via the, the, the Royal Alliance website. Uh, information has also been put out on the Facebook page of, uh, of both Nick in Europe and uh, Nick in headquarters. Uh, so do look into that. Uh, and we're really looking forward to gathering a lot of women there. Uh, and yes, I think that's it. Uh, Thank you very much again, Kim, for, for taking the time. Uh, um, you had a little bit of uh, difficulties in the beginning, but we're very glad that um, you and also Ben sorted those technical issues out and you could get on. So, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you, I hope, then in Orlando. Um, will you be there? I hope to be. I hope to be. Um, yeah, all being well, we should be. So it's been my pleasure to be on the call today. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome and thank you very much. Okay, so that's it everybody. Have a wonderful evening here in Europe and uh, then uh, talk to you next month. And uh, to those of you coming to Orlando, really looking forward to seeing you there. We will be doing something, so uh, we'll get back to you on that.